In this video, I'm going to explain what is the difference between extending M365 Copilot versus building your own custom Copilot when leveraging Copilot Studio and why you might do one versus the other. First, start with what is Copilot Studio anyway and why is this even a discussion? So if we look at what Copilot Studio is, Copilot Studio is a combination of tooling and other things that make up a SaaS based platform that allows you to be able to build your own copilot or to customize Microsoft copilots that are available in market. Example being the M365 copilot uh, is probably one of the most popular. And then it brings all of that together so that you can not only build it, but you can host it, you can report on it, you can do all of those things so that you can build your own copilot experiences, whether you're extending an existing copilot or you want to build your own custom copilot. If we look inside of Copilot Studio to see what's really inside of that box, what's inside this Copilot Studio thing that we're talking about you're going to find that it has a co-pilot building studio, which includes the ability for you to be able to create something called plugins and things of that nature or leverage plugins or plugin actions. We have generative AI features and commodity comp components where typical patterns of generative AI capabilities are uh, available to you as a SaaS, but allow you to configure those. We also have the ability inside to do uh, different channels that you can publish to. So uh, a channel would be like Facebook Messenger or a web chat or Microsoft Teams, things of that nature. Um, and then you have a whole reporting infrastructure for uh, you to be able to do analytics and get insights off of how your conversational application or copilot is working. One of the things that kind of differentiates the Copilot Studio is it also comes with an automation studio. And that automation studio is also known as Power Automate. Power Automate gives you the ability to kick off like a business process automation while also uh, providing you thousands of connectors that will allow you to connect to different APIs and things so that you can uh, not only connect to a backend uh, data source or an API, but you can also use it to kick off a business process automation as part of that as well. The last part is it has a uh, admin studio and that admin studio is there to allow you to manage and uh, do things like governance and things of that nature for the SaaS product itself. And what Copilot Studio is, the next question is, what is M365 Copilot or the Microsoft 365 Copilot? Now for M365 Copilot, there's a lot of confusion in the market about what this is, what it is not. Um, you should think of it that it is your personal productivity assistant. It is there to help you be able to uh, be more efficient in your daily activities and helping you be able to get your job done uh, quicker. A great example is uh, finding the email that I was working with on Sam on this particular topic last week. Those type of things, a, a personal productivity assistant could really help you uh, with a lot. And it's built on top of large language models. It also uses the Microsoft Graph and all the data you have access to within the back end uh, that's stored within it. You can also, by the way, even add additional data that's not in the inside of um, the M365 platform. There are ways to add that in to be indexed as part of the graph. So just be aware if you're just trying to add an additional document that you want to get indexed to be able to answer questions over or let people use, um, you're more so how do I get the data into it, not how do I extend it? The other thing is, is that it also has a bunch of applications. You know these as PowerPoint, Outlook, Excel, all of those, right? Teams is another example. And it also includes the internet and the knowledge on the internet. And by combining all of this together, it helps you build or helps you uh, have experiences that are out of the box that just allow you to be able to do many really 
productivity focused things. But it's important to understand that just as many Microsoft Copilot products, they are out of the box functionally to do specific things. It's like having an Alexa speaker and Alexa speaker is always going to be an Alexa speaker, but you can extend it like Alexa speakers to be able to control the thermostat at your house, but you can't stop the Alexa speaker from being an Alexa. You always will have that capability. I explain it this way because a lot of people think that it's a hosting platform or a SaaS platform for every internal use that you might run into, and it's just not the case. What it is there for, which is very important and very powerful, is to help you with personal productivity, and it is extremely powerful when you combine it with the extensibility that Copilot Studio brings when you use it. So the next question most people run into is, why would I extend a Copilot, such as M365 Copilot, or versus building my own custom Copilot? Why would I do one of those or the other? So let's start the conversation around what is Copilot Studio for? And then what are first party Copilots or things such as M365 Copilot? What are they actually intended for? So if you look at Copilot Studio, the whole idea is to allow you to be able to chat over your data and scope it down to what it is that you want. You can have like a semantic index, you can bring whatever you want, but you're in control of the scope of that knowledge discovery. You also think, see things like task completion, where you want to identify and complete a task. Um, you might be using plugins or a combination of different assets to be able to do, bring that together. And then it's also used to be able to customize Microsoft first party copilots. But if you look at first party copilots inside of Microsoft, you're going to notice that it does, those do different things. Those are out of the box experiences that will give you the ability to do things like content creation with Bing Enterprise. You have things like productivity and personal productivity through uh, the M365 copilot. And then you have things like the GitHub copilot that helps you with solution development. The first thing you must understand when you're dealing with first party copilots from Microsoft is you need to understand what is the scope of what it was built for, what is the intention. Just like inside of Windows, you might have many different applications, each of them do their own thing. And there's no intention of having like this one huge copilot because even at Microsoft, we have over 80 of those today. And the reason behind that has a lot to do with the way that humans interact in a conversational way. So it's unlikely that you will be able to build a single Jarvis, uh, like from Iron Man type of situation, because there is context in, involved. Even in the movies with Jarvis, there was always context that was understood on that he was helping uh, or Jarvis was helping Iron Man with that particular scenario uh, and had a context, couldn't do just anything in the world. So just keep that in mind as you continue to think about each of these different co-pilots and understanding their context and what they're used for. Now, a lot of you are probably going, this is all great. I, I love all this conversation about this. However, can you give me an example of why I might use one versus the other? Because what you're going to find is that it's not so clear cut. It's not a simple decision tree. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to accomplish it and what is the systems that you want to connect to and what's the scope of the conversation you want to control. And so when you take all of those things into consideration, that's how you get the answer. So let's get some real world examples of where these things play. So first, Let's start with extending the M365 Copilot. What are some good examples of doing this? A good example would be uh, adding, uh, logging in your time for your timesheet in, say, a system like Workday. Uh, you'll use the connectors. You can create a plugin, and it's a very actionable thing. And it's something that, with personal productivity, super common type of activity that you would want to do. 
Same thing with requesting a new computer through SAP or whatever is your backend system that you would want to connect to. Notice that each of these things have APIs and you're interacting and building a conversational action off of the APIs. It's not answering questions about this because that is part of the RAG pattern that's built into the M365 implementation. We'll talk more about that in a second. Notice that also like updating your address in the HR system. Another great way to extend uh, the M365 Copilot would be to do that or requesting vacation through the time tracking system or even opening a service desk ticket inside a service now. All of these things are actions. They're like really actionable type of things. They have a scope. You can build a prompt around them to explain when to engage this thing versus just answering general questions uh, that the uh, M365 Copilot already has access to. So these are great examples, but keep in mind, and I've got a, a little asterisk here at the bottom, which is the M365 Copilot, when you want to answer questions over content, you're not scoping it down. The whole idea is that the M365 Copilot, as a personal assistant to you, has access to all the data you have access to. And so when you ask a question around like policies and things like this, for corporate communications, it's a very different situation than looking over everything I have access to and trying to generate a response to that. It's much better to have scoping controls for you to be able to do that. So this is just a great example of where it's super powerful and we can do a lot of great things. And if you think about an M365 Copilot that's cutting hours out of your day, helping you do the common things that you have to do every day as your personal assistant, it's a very different thing than asking the HR department, what is the travel policy and making sure that that is very scoped. So now let's talk about a situation where you might want a custom copilot and examples of that. So an example of that would be an employee assistant for like HR, or IT service desk, or it can be a combination of the two, uh, depending on how you want to control and brand it. Think in, the, think in your mind about the need to have like an intranet. So this is a situation where you don't just randomly get every document in the intranet for corporate comms. You're going to actually want to control that content. Keep in mind that corporate comms type of situations may be better served in this way. Now, if you've done rights management inside of the M365 Copilot and you have ensured that the policy documents are only exposed to the right people, absolutely, you could potentially go do that. But it's a matter of understanding what you need as an organization to be able to make that decision. Then we go into things like contact center deflection. This is a big place for custom co-pilots. And that can be done through digital channels like texting or web chat, but they can also be done over voice or IVR stacks. Also, we have a lot of customers that are coming to us wanting to do vacation planning or concierge type of co-pilots that help people with their products or answer questions on their website or help you uh, figure out what's the best show to go see when you're staying in a specific hotel or a good place to go eat. We also know that scoped content, we've talked about this already a few times, when you want to scope the content down to say, here's the assets and only this set of assets, not around what I have access to, but specifically scope down to this content is the content I want this conversational agent or copilot to have access to. This is where you would use a custom copilot. Also, if the copilot needed to be in multiple channels, each of the Microsoft Copilots that are available first party have channel limitations. They're only available in the channels that are provided. But if you want to build one that talks over SMS, talks over Teams, and talks over the phone, and through a web chat on your website, then you're going to need to build a custom Copilot to be able to expose it in all of the channels that you want. Lastly, I would say that it is extremely common that co there are situations where organizations require for legal reasons, for PR reasons, or for brand management situations where they want to say, this is exactly 
what I wanted to say when you asked that particular question. This is a great example of a custom copilot. So hopefully this has been helpful for you to understand the differences between um, extending a copilot versus uh, such as M365 copilot and building custom copilots. It seems to be like the most confusing thing for most people, but if you really break it down to the core components, you, you'll see that these are very different capabilities and the tooling is there to be able to allow people to be able to do either of the things that they want. And it is also important to understand it is totally possible that you will build something into a custom copilot and then take that subcomponent of your copilot and publish it as an extensibility to one of the Microsoft copilots. So if you had built an HR or an employee assistant, it totally makes sense that you might say that you're going to publish tracking your time or something like that into the M365 Copilot. And the beauty of this is that Copilot Studio itself is the same tool and the same mechanism. So you can reuse that IP and reuse that logic that you've already built. And it's just a matter of placing that capability into multiple locations. Again, hope this video was super helpful for you guys. Please like and subscribe to uh, my videos. And if you have any additional feedback, please put it into the chat. And as always, you can go try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.